And this morning, church, we are going to be talking about the new covenant. We are concluding our series um, on the covenants, and today we are going to speak about the new covenant. Now, the Old Testament is about the old covenants, and the New Testament is about the new covenants. But as we learned, the Old Testament speaks of the new covenants throughout. We especially see God speak of the new covenant in Jeremiah 31, which the author of Hebrews mentions again in chapter 8. As we have seen, and as we have studied the Old Testament, we have seen that there are unconditional ones, like the, God, the one that God made with Abraham, where he said, Abram, I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you, and I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse those who curse you. This is a one-sided covenant. God said it, and God was going to do it. There are also two-sided covenants, and we learned about this. The best one um, that describes this is the one that God made with the Israelite people on Mount Sinai. God took them by the hand, remember, and he led them out of the land of Egypt, out of the land of slavery, and he established a covenant with them. In this covenant, God said, I will do this, and I will do that. But if you, and you will do this, but if you do not do this, then this will happen to you. In this, um, in this covenant, it was between the nation of Israel, and they were to represent God to the people, to all of the people, and they were to represent the people to God. God wanted all of Israel to be able to come to him and then to represent who he was to the people of the lands. Now this covenant, uh, as Pastor Matt explained last week, it had a lot of pieces to it, it, or a couple weeks ago, right? It had a lot of pieces to it. It was not only the Ten Commandments, but it was also some 600 plus other civil and ceremonial laws attached to it. We hear about a new covenant in the Old Testament in Jeremiah 31, 31 through 34 where God says, the day is coming when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel in Judah. I will put my instructions deep within them. And in Ezekiel 36, 7, he says, I will put my spirit in you so you will follow my decrees and regulations. The, in Jeremiah 31, he also says, I will be their God and they will be my people. Everyone from the least to the greatest will know me. This new covenant, it is going to be for everybody. And in this new covenant, God will be God and we will be his people. And then he says, I will forgive their wickedness and I will remember their sins no more. And in Ezekiel That's in Jeremiah, and then in Ezekiel 36, he says, I will cleanse you, I will wash away your filth. Now, I want to talk with you this morning about something that we have been doing every Sunday morning um, as we have gone through this series on claiming the covenants. Does anybody know what that is? What have we done every Sunday morning as we've gone through this series? Pardon? Pardon? We've shared in the communion meal. That's right. Each week you have been provided at your tables with bread and juice to share with those at your table. Now I don't want you to do anything with that this morning because we're actually going to take communion at the end of service. And so if you at home would like to get some juice and some bread and prepare yourself for taking communion with us at the end of service, um, this would be maybe a good time to do that. So each week we've shared the conversation Jesus had with his disciples as he broke the bread. We shared conversation about the new covenant. And this morning, I would like us to go back to the day when Jesus gathered with his disciples. They are going to take part in the Passover meal. And Passover was a big deal. It was an annual celebration when the Jewish people would get together and celebrate that God had delivered them out of slavery. He had delivered their ancestors out of slavery. Now at this time, even though they were going into Jerusalem to celebrate this, they may not have felt like they had been delivered completely because remember Jerusalem was under the Roman um, rule or, or under Roman authority, right? So they may have, they may, they were going in to celebrate, but they may have had a little bit of feeling of we're celebrating we're just remembering what took place in the past 
But there is still something else that's ruling, someone else that's ruling over us. Passover was a celebration, um, and there would be thousands and thousands of people that would come into Jerusalem to take part in this celebration. And it was during this time that a plot was taking place by the chief priests and the Jewish leaders. You see, they wanted to kill Jesus. Because they, they were afraid, it says. We're told um, that they were afraid. They anticipated that Jesus would be in Jerusalem. And so they publicly ordered anyone who saw him to report it immediately to them and he would be arrested. It was at that time that Judas, one of Jesus' disciples, went to the chief priests and the officers of the temple guard and shared with them how he might betray Jesus. And in Luke 22, 4, it says they were delighted because they were afraid. They were delighted that they were finally going to be able to arrest Jesus because they were afraid. Now, when I read that, I wondered, why were they afraid? What were they so afraid of? And I think they were probably afraid of the same thing we're afraid of when we allow Jesus to be king of our life. Maybe they were afraid that they were going to lose status. Maybe they were afraid that they were going to lose their authority. Maybe they were afraid that Jesus came to take something away from them. But in reality, he came to give them something. He came to give us life, life in the fullest, life abundantly. During this time, Jesus had been hanging out in Ephraim with his disciples. It was a remote place. But as Passover was approaching, he sent two of his disciples, Peter and John, ahead to prepare the meal. Now it's the time of the celebration meal. So he and the other disciples come to the place that's prepared. And we are told in Luke 22, 19 through 20, as the disciples gathered around him, Jesus took the bread and gave thanks. Now, I want you to listen this morning, and as I said, we're going to share at the end. But every Sunday, as we've shared communion, you've had a loaf of bread in front of you that you've broke. And normally, that's what we do when we share communion here. We share it from a loaf of bread that's leavened. But as the disciples sat there, they would have shared from a, a, an unleavened bread. And, and it would have been similar to the cracker that I have here this morning, similar to the cracker that you're going to use. But I want everybody to be really quiet for a minute. And I want you to think about this in great depth. <laughs> He's laughing because I have a cracker up here. You know what Jensen gets from Ma often? He gets a cracker, right? So he sees me with his cracker. He's like, wait, wait, she's got that for me. <laughs> um, but as Jesus took the bread, and it was very silent, and the disciples were anticipating, they could hear him break the bread. They could hear him break the bread. And they did not expect the words that were going to come out of his mouth next. Because what he said to them is, take this bread and do it in remembrance of my body which is broken for you wait 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 wait, wait a minute they must have been thinking jesus wait we remember of course we remember we take this celebration year after year we we take this bread in celebration year after year of what god did for us when he brought us out of egypt what are you talking about do this now in remembrance of you But Jesus is saying, from now on, every time you break the bread, do it in remembrance of what I am going to do for you. In Luke 22, 20, we read that after the supper, Jesus took the cup a second time. And he said, this cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood, which is poured out as a sacrifice for you. Again, the disciples do not understand. 
They drink of the cup as a remembrance of the blood that was shed by the animals the night they left Egypt. And God told them to put the blood from the lamb, from the perfect lamb, over their door frames. And as the death angel went through, it would pass over and they would be spared. And then they left Egypt under the blood of the lamb. Now we need to remember that this is before Jesus went to the cross. The disciples would have had... Uh, they wouldn't have had the same opportunity as we have for grasping the truth of this until a day later when Jesus died. On that day, Jesus would have ratified the covenant with the shedding of his blood. It was once for all. When Jesus took the cup and said, Drink, this is my blood shed for you, he was saying, I will play the role of the animal that is sacrificed to inaugurate this new covenant, to launch this new covenant. Now, I don't know how much you guys know about the ratification of covenants in the Old Testament, but in ancient times, um, what would have happened when uh, coven in ancient covenants, what would have happened is the covenants would have been ratified. So they would take an animal and they would cut them into two. They would split them and they would lay them out. And then those that were participating in the covenant, they would walk through those pieces. And uh, one commentary said, it's, a, it's, it's what we're saying when we say we're going to cut a deal with you, we're saying that may it be unto me as it is to this most unfortunate animal if I violate this covenant. They were saying, I'm pledging my life. Now, there were basically a, a couple kinds of covenants that we've talked about. One is a promissory covenant where the one person would walk between them, and that's like the covenant that God made with Abram, right? No matter what, God was going to keep that covenant. But then there were the other kinds of covenants that were between the two parties, and that would have been like the one that he made with the Hebrew people, the Israelites. But here, Jesus is ratifying the covenant. Previously, every time they drank from this cup, they were celebrating the fact that God had established a new relationship with Israel. They were his people, and he was their God. But when we drink of this cup and eat of the bread, we are celebrating that God has established a brand new relationship with us. That's why we take communion. God has established a brand new relationship with us. As a writer of Hebrews says he cleansed us from our sins and then he sat down at the place of honor at the right hand of the majestic god in heaven did you hear that god god or jesus he 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 did this for us he said for us i am going to do this i am pledging my life for you and that's something we should not take lightly. That's something we should praise him and thank him for every single day. Amen? Jesus is saying, every time you drink of this cup, you are celebrating the brand new covenant. And this is what he was saying to the disciples. And it's going to begin tonight. This, this uh, shouldn't really have been brand new news to these men because they were Jewish, they were Jewish men. And they would, have, they would have studied the laws. They would have studied the books of the, the scrolls of the Old Testament. And they would have heard this promise in the scroll of Jeremiah as it was read. You see, the prophet Jeremiah had predicted that a day would come when God would establish a new covenant that would replace the current covenant. And we read about this in Jeremiah 31 and also in Hebrews 8, as I already mentioned. The prophet said, the days are coming when I will make a new covenant to the people of Israel and Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with them when I led them out of Egypt. In this new covenant, I will put my laws in their mind and I will write it on their hearts. He is giving us a new conscience. This, it's a law of conscience. 
And the new covenant was a new kind of relationship. It was not just between God and a nation, but it was between God and the nations. Not between God and a cer certain group of, group of people, but between God and individuals. It's between God and me and God and you. John told us in, in his book, in the book of John, how we can receive this new covenant. You ready for this? It's simply by believing. Believe, that's all it means, trust. We receive this covenant, this free gift, by simply believing. Just as Jesus said to Peter, I know all about you, but I'm inviting you to follow me, Jesus says to all of us, I know all about you. And I'm inviting you to follow me. I know every detail of your life. I know everything you've done to try to gain my acceptance. I know every failure you've ever done. I know every fault that exists within you. But I love you. And all you need to do is just follow me. And Jesus is saying to us this morning, you are on the receiving side. It is 100% for you. It is 100% on me. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for the, right, for the forgiveness of sins. So this morning, I would like us to take communion together. And for you who are at home also, if you would like to take communion. But as you do that, as you take the cracker or the bread, and hopefully you were able to get a cracker, I want you to, to uh, prepare now, okay? And around your tables, I really want you to listen as that cracker is broken. And I want you to think about the fact that Jesus' body was broken for you. Not because it had to be, but because he gave it up for you. And I want you to take a, a moment as you hear that cracker broken and then shared this morning. I want you to take a moment to just thank the Lord for the love that he has poured out upon you. And whoever's leading at your table, I would just like you to share these words with those at your table. As you pass out the, the cracker, I would like you to share, remember, this is Jesus' body which was broken for you. Take and eat. And as you take the juice this morning, the person that's at the table, I would like to, you to say to the other, the others there, this cup is representative of the juice of, the, I'm sorry, this cup is representative of the blood that Jesus shed for you for the remissions of sin. Take and drink. And I want you to remember that Jesus took the cup the second time and he said, This is the new covenant. And we are living in the new covenant. It's 100% on Jesus. It's his grace poured out for us. It's his love poured out for us. There isn't anything that we have to do except believe and to follow him. In Hebrews, if you'll turn with me in Hebrews...
I'm going to read chapter or verse 2 and verse 3 of chapter 1. And now in these final days, he has spoken to us through his son. God promised everything to the son as an inheritance. And through the son, he created the universe. The son radiates God's glory and expresses the very character of God. And he sustains everything by the mighty power of his command. When he had cleansed us from our sins. He sat down in the place of honor at the right hand of the majestic God in heaven. Verse 4, this shows that the Son is far greater than angels, just as the name of God gave him is far greater than their names. This is the word of the Lord. So what I want you to hear this morning, church, is this free gift, it's for all of the people. This free gift is for all of the people. And every Sunday when we gather together, we celebrate what Jesus has done for us. When we come together and we share testimony of how God has worked in our lives, we're celebrating how his grace has worked out that week in our lives. When we gather together every Sunday morning and we sing praise to him, we gather together and we celebrate the love that he poured out for us. This is why we are the church. And not only do we come together and we celebrate, but we go out into the world and we share with them his grace and his goodness and his love. Jesus was the, represented the very character of God, and he represents that very character to us. And as we go through the New Testament, as we read through the New Testament, we see all the things that Jesus did as he walked with his disciples. He healed the sick. He touched the blind. He set the captives free. These were all promised in the Old Covenant, in the Old Testament. And these are all things that he has accomplished, and he is accomplishing. And we, church, are able to share that with those who need hope who do not have hope so my my sending message to you today as you leave this place is this week remember the love God poured out for you for God so loved you that he gave us one and only son that if you believe in him you shall have everlasting life and then remember all of the places that he has provided you hope this week. And as you meet people along the way who need hope, share with them the hope that you have in Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. You may go in God's blessing and his grace.